So welcome back to our AI and ML 101 tutorial, where soon we will be discussing agents and trading AIs. But before diving into that let's prepare by learning the basics of using Alpaca Markets, which we'll use to test our trading bots. Alpaca is great in that you can create a free account there for paper trading, without using any real money. After signing up you can log in and check your paper trading account, or you can start a live account. But for us a paper trading account is more than enough. In the main dashboard we can see that we have $100,000 to start with. Now. If you don't have Python installed on your computer, you can download Anaconda and create a dedicated environment for our tests. You can download it for Windows, Mac or Linux even without signing up. If you'd like to learn more about Anaconda, you can check out one of my previous tutorials. Because we'll be using Alpaca PY library. We'll create here an environment called Alpaca ENV with Python 3.11.11 but you can choose the Python version you want. We'll install JuPyTer Notebook version 7.2.2. But at the moment you are watching it there might be a newer version which you can use. Now, let's start the notebook with this tutorial in our newly created environment. And finally, let's install the Alpaca Pi library version 0.35, which was released on December 20th, 2024. And that's it. Now we can start testing the Alpaca and its API. So, as you can see here, in the main dashboard you can see how much money we have and our buying power. We can buy and sell stocks or crypto directly from the dashboard. And we can see if we have any stocks or crypto and orders that were placed. If you want to use Alpaca's API, you'll need your API key and secret key. You can generate them in the main dashboard and then copy and paste them into your program. Just make sure you copied the entire key. If necessary, you can regenerate the key and copy and paste the new version. Now, with these few lines of code, you can check if you have any stocks or crypto. In this code, we import necessary modules from Alpaca. Create a trading client using the provided API key and secret key and retrieve all current positions in the account. And since we don't have any the list is empty. Okay, with this next sell, we could buy one share of Google. However, since the market is currently closed, we can only see that the order has been placed and accepted. We'll leave it at that for now. And I'll show you later how this order works when the market is open. So, as you can see our portfolio is still empty. Now, the same way we can order to buy Apple shares. Here we place a market order to buy one share of Apple. AAPL. For the current day and we can see that our order appears in the recent orders in the dashboard. And if we had any shares we could sell them with this code. The only change in the code is that while the order side was previously set to buy, it is now set to sell. So we'll leave it at that for now and move on to buying crypto. Bitcoin. For which the market is always open. As you can see when we try to buy crypto in our paper trading account, we type BTC, USD. Whereas for stocks we just type the stock symbol like AAPL or GOOG. We also use a different time in force for the order here. GTC. Good till cancelled, unlike the previous day time in force, which is valid only until the end of the market day. And here we can see that we bought one Bitcoin, but we only have 0.9975 Bitcoin due to Alpaca's trading fee. We used almost all of our money for this transaction. So it's good that we are using a paper trading account and not real money. And now we can see that position with a lot of extra info. Now, if we want to sell the cryptocurrency we have, we need to remember about that trading fee, because of which we don't have the one Bitcoin at the moment and either buy more bitcoins to be able to sell one whole. But only if we have enough money, or adjust the number of bitcoins we sell, like we do here. If we want to sell all we have, we can also simply close all positions. And with this we don't have to think how many bitcoins or other shares or crypto we have. This might be useful sometimes. So now you know how to buy and sell using Alpaca Pi. So in a moment we'll learn how to get historical data, that we might use to train our future trading bot. But first let's close the open orders that were accepted but not filled. Let's do it from our dashboard by simply cancelling them. And done. And that's it for our paper trading at the moment. As you can see after just a couple of minutes we are about $600 short. So it's really good that we were using a paper account for these tests. Okay, so, one last thing before we get to that historical data. Let me show you how buying and selling shares works when the market is open. I added this part during editing, and we start here with some bitcoins already bought. So at first, let's buy one share of Google. And here we have it. Isn't this easy? Now when we check our positions we can see both Bitcoins and Google shares. Cool. Now let's buy one share of Apple and see it appear in our portfolio. And here it is. And we can also see it with our get all positions method. Great. So now let's sell these shares. First Apple. And it's gone. And now Google. Done. And we've earned 3 cents from these transactions. 
and still have some bitcoins. So now that you know how to buy and sell stocks and crypto, let's get back to the historical data. Here we create a request to retrieve daily bar data for Bitcoin and Ethereum, starting from August 1st, 2024, and use the crypto historical data client to fetch the data. We get a lot of data with that request, including the close, high low and open prices, trade count, volume and volume weighted average price for each day for every crypto. First for Bitcoin and below for Ethereum. We can also get this data for just one cryptocurrency, like here for Bitcoin. First, by selecting the Bitcoin portion from all the bars we received. And here, by selecting only Bitcoin before downloading the data. And that's it. Now, I'll tell you about more advanced orders in the next video. Bracket orders and trailing stop orders that can be quite helpful. And after that, as I mentioned before, we'll learn more about agents. And see if we can use LLMs to create our trading agent. We'll see how they can help us during preparing the code and more. Hope to see you there. And now? As they say, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that bell button to get notifications whenever I upload a new video. You can also find this tutorial. More about me and my projects on my site, superai.pl. Meanwhile, good luck with everything you do. Like with your learning how to create trading bots. Improve yourself, improve your business, improve the world, but also live and have fun. Hopefully, see you soon. Yours, SuperAI.